At the heart of today's debate is a reevaluation of the criminal justice system. And the motion for today reads the criminal justice system should focus more on rehabilitative programs rather than punitive measures. I read the motion again the criminal justice system should focus more on rehabilitative programs rather than punitive measures. Proposing and opposing this motion is Nyango Boys versus Mary School in the Upper Eastern Regional Debates. Team proposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. The United National Assembly adopted the system of criminal justice in the year 1990. My name is Stanley Ngeshu, the mighty Nyango, as usually known. Ready to propose the motion, criminal justice should focus more on rehabilitation rather than punitive measures. What is this criminal justice system that I've been talking about? It, criminal justice system is the network of government and private to agencies to manage the accused and, the, and convicting the criminals. E.g., one of, has been accused of committing any crime, is taken to the court and is uh, guided through the guidelines and is accused of that crime. According to the resolution 4511, it states that all criminals should be treated with the respect due to their dignity and and respect, e.g. through rehabilitation. So what is this rehabilitation? Rehabilitation is, the, um, is a guideline where one is given a chance to realize his mistakes, his offenses. E.g. a drug dealer is taken to a rehab where he is guided and he knows that taking drugs is, uh, is wrong and e.g. even a drug trafficker. You see this rehabilitation, through rehabilitation, one is acceptable to the society since he can get skills. We have masonry, even the rehabilitation. In Kenya, we have more than 700 rehabilitation centers, which are more than the prisons. So, what is, we have, what uh, my this draw, what I oppose is about the punitive measures. These are the harsh way of making criminals to realize their mistakes by putting them behind the bus or e.g. through cells. Where one commits a crime and is accused, e.g. through, uh, is given 20 years term in the prison. Through this, one can lose hope. Even, you see, if you are 40 years, you'll get out even when you are 60. And you see this, even, you know, with 60 years, you cannot even get married. According to Bill and Graham, 2010, they stated that, in quotes, they quoted that, I quoted that from Bill and Graham, 2010, they stated that punishment makes an offender feel worthless and helpless. So if you are punished every day, you know that every day you take 20 strokes. You feel worthless and helpless. For example, Kenya has come from the old days of the Nyaya chambers where people were tortured, they were taken to the chambers where they were beaten. If Kenya has come from that as a refrain from punishment, who are you to oppose? Uh, in USA, they use over $70,000 on punishment, which is higher than the rehabilitation. So, to my opposers, I'm sorry. <laughs> You cannot, you cannot oppose those facts. Yes. Team opposition, first speaker, you have three minutes. Behind me is the full might of the undisputed champions of Meru School. And in front of you is Jehu Adil from Meru School. First of all, I'd like to say that my fellow comrade over here has failed to mention how that 7,000 is utilized in the prisons. He's told us that 700 rehabilitative centers have been found in Kenya and that their number exceeds the number of prisons. And yet, where does that place our community? Every now and then, cases of theft, cases of deaths, cases of rapes. Where does that place our community, if I may ask you? So criminal, criminal justice systems should focus more on rehabilitative programs than punitive measures. I strongly oppose this point. 
What do we understand by criminal, uh, criminal justice? Criminal justice is where someone is punished for his or her own crimes. What do you understand by justice? Fair, treat, fair, fair, fair treatment of people. Focus. Give attention or effort to one particular subject. Punitive. Intended as punishment, very severe and hard to pay. System. An organized set of ideas or theories, a particular way of doing something. My first point will be to say that punitive justice usually serves as an example. A good example of this is an example. I repeat, example. An uncle of mine married someone, married someone known as Rhea. When he married the person known as Rhea, he killed her sister and the mother came to know about it. The mother then reported to the authorities and yet then the uncle of mine was taken to a rehabilitative center. Once taken there, he was released after being told, he was released after some time after being told and having undergone the rehabilitative programs, programs I mean, sorry. When he came back, he came to seek revenge on the mother who ratted him out because now he, he's considering her as a snitch. That case, then he later came and killed the mother. That case could have been avoided by simply just putting the man to death or life imprisonment. My second point, 13th January 2022. Punitive justice seeks to remove people from society and incarcerate them in pension, in pen, pension institutions. SDG number 16. Peace, ju SDG number 16, simple development goals, peace, justice, and strong institutions. The more we continue to rehabilitate, rehabilitate them, the more we use money. The more we use money on that, the more we don't focus on the other things. Peace, justice, and strong institutions. Justice. People usually cry out for justice. One cannot murder an entire family, leaving one kid, get imprisoned, later being released, not having been punished the correct way. That imprisonment is not enough. Thank you. Team proposition second speaker, you have three minutes. I stand before you here to tell you that uh, I strongly propose the motion that criminal justice system should focus more on the rehabilitative programs rather than the punitive measures. One thing my proposal here has said is that rehabilitation are less costly because most of these people are here to help others on their own free will. No one is forcing them, no one is paying them to do such kind of things. So rehabilitation is not all about the more the process continues, the more expensive it will be. No, it is all about someone willingly trying to give out their services to people who are in need of them. And I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see the sense in that punishment is the way here. One thing I want you to realize that probably this person who has been jailed is there just to put on a show for him to be done with all that he's doing in the cell so that he can continue. Uh, the saying says that scratch my back, I scratch yours. These criminals will grow up with a, with a mentality that they have punished me, they have done one, two, three on me. And uh, I won't feel right being done that. The best way to, to get back at them is by making even more crimes to a sense that they might not help in changing the criminal, the criminal records of that individual. So one thing that punishment does, it causes resentment to the community. How does it cause resentment? For example, a friend of mine decides to sell drugs to my child. Do I expect him to be, do I, do I expect to accept him back? No, I won't accept him back. So, but through rehabilitation, I'm able to see him change his ways. I'm able to see him work on his issues and I'm able to see how gradually he's able to process and how he's able to make up his, his own mistake. Because punishment is all about making the person feel bad and feel wrong that he did what he's done. But through rehabilitation, he's able to be talked to, able to understand what he needs to do in order to make up for his mistakes. Punishment also does not tell the offender of what he did wrong and how to make it up for it. Uh, like I've explained there, through rehabilitation, he's able to understand what he did and understand how to make it up for it. Punishment also changes the offender's attitude in future crimes because the harsh, the harsh prison conditions generate more aggressive behaviors. And uh, through these aggressive behaviors, the, the criminal justice system of 
trying to reduce the crime rates of a country we are able to we are, we are not able to change that and able to make it happen because what we are doing here is changing the mentality of that individual and to continue making more offenses which is not what we are after another thing that punishment also does it uh, it causes them to feel anger towards the community victims and the overall correction facility uh, countries like Russia, China, US, and such, and uh, North Korea, they practice this form of of, of criminal justice system. And uh, these people, the the mindset of such criminals are at a higher level to a sense that there's nothing that they cannot do because of what they know. But as they are punished in those cells and such places, they continue feeling and continue holding their grudges on those people who have done it to them. And you realize that after they are done with their sentences, they, are, they come back to do and to revenge against what they have been done. Uh, I'm trying to see the sense here in the point that punishment should be the case of a criminal justice system. But this is not what we need to do. Because rehabilitation is all about changing the mindset of the individual, enabling, enabling us to see what he needs to do in order to be a better person. Because rehabilitation helps us to accept him back to the society. And I can confidently say that a criminal justice system should focus more on the rehabilitative programs rather than the punitive measures. Thank you. Team opposition, second speaker, you have three minutes. An accepted cultural truth is that the punishment should fit the crime. And here to sound with such intellect is Manuel Mwaneki from Meru School. To start us off, I'll give us some stats. The University of Psychology in Colombia carried out a test, and they found out that the consequences affect approximately 39% of the decisions we make. Just as he has said punishment is a cruel offense, makes you resentive, it actually helps us make better judgment. The same way if promised a reward, you'll tend to work harder towards something, if offered a punishment for lack of it, you will work just as hard to avoid it. Furthermore, research was carried out by the Bureau of Justice Statistics in May of 2018. And what they, the results they found were actually quite shocking. To start us off, to, this research was carried over a nine-year period. And it involved 401,288 released conflict, con, sorry, Con prisoners who had gone through a rehabilitation program. Over the span of these nine years, from these 400,000 criminals, two million arrests were made. 68% of these came in the first year, 79% over the first, the first six years, and 83% over the nine years. These is proof, if not in excess, that when you take these three rehabilitative programs and release them back into society, it might have an effect, yes, on the 17%, but there's still the larger 83% who are releasing back into the civilization. Another example of a single out one man who did not change despite going through re rehabilitation was Ted Bundy. He was convicted for one murder. After that, he committed 35 others. His eventual arrest 13 years later was a happy day for the U.S. Yes, but at what cost for the member families who had been affected? And lastly, is the investment effect it will have on our economy. In a press conference held in last year, July, a representative from the World Bank stated that countries with strong justice systems were 8% more likely to receive funding from the United States of America. Now, I don't know about you, but from, what, from the look of the news, our economy is not in the best place. And I do like the funding that America gives to, to Kenya. Thus, implementing harder and more dangerous consequences for our actions will eventually have a much harder effect on the economy and on the safety of the civilizations. Hopefully, I've said enough to sway you. And with that, I will just <laughs> Team proposition, third speaker, you have three minutes. I come here from I, I come here with the strength of the great typhoon to strongly propose the fact that rehabilitative programs are much better and more advantageous to us than punitive measures. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow students, what do you see in my hand? What is this that I that I hold? This is a whip. To my 
friends from the other side. They prefer to say that a whip is, the, is a much better way to help our criminals and by punishing them is the best way to curb crime rate. Is that what you, that's what you're trying to tell us? Isn't that true? Yes. This is what they, they try to tell us. Um, the, um, the man they're telling, they're telling us, Ted Bundy, yes, it's true, he committed murder. But the, what they're also trying to tell us is, a man that, that steals at the petty village thief, that steals chicken from our, household, from our households, he should be held for, I don't know, three months, and, uh, and uh, should be accepting 20 sorts of cane each. Isn't is that what you're trying to tell us? The same way you're trying to tell us is that uh, we should hold those who are accountable, but instead, rehabilitation shows that it, ch it changes the mindset of us and also of the criminals. Many, motivation, many motivational books and speakers speak of change begin, begins from the mind. Note that rehab, rehabilitative programs are there to educate, create, and improve the individual. Let me ask you this. In school, a teacher comes and, uh, inst and uh, flogs you for, let's say, something that uh, you, to you, uh, seems petty or uh, didn't seem, didn't uh, quite uh, get that kind of treatment. Let me tell you, uh, rehabilitation shows that after one has served his sentence, him going to, him leaving to go to the society sort of scares the society uh, and that he was taken as a murder and not as a thief. Rehabilitation shows that the criminals are taken to prison, yes, but they are trained and they are given and they trained skills such as masonry, carpentry, plumbing, so as they can be useful to the society once they are released and they have finished their, 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 their sentence. The uh, first lady, mother, uh, the first lady, Pastor Dorcas, as you, as you have seen in the, in the news, the, uh, she has started rehabilita rehabilitation programs to help those who, to help those who, to help those who have been uh, addicted to drugs, drug traffickers, and all that. They, th that helps us and it helps our country because those people are not only useful but they also be used as an asset to improve our economy and to improve their welfare to the society. Thank you. Position, third speaker, you have three minutes. Now the battle begins, but what if the battle is already lost? My name is Levin Mark representing the Meru School and uh, to be honest, let me start by doing something that I really don't think I should be doing. Jail is a form of rehabilitation. You seem to have forgotten that. Punish someone among you said that punishment does not tell them what they did wrong. Um, even from the littlest of shows, TV shows, like Vihoja Makamani, you'd see the judge stating to the convict exactly what they've done. So please, go get yourself informed. Again, someone talked about having aggressive behavior towards the community. That is not as a form of punitive punishment. That is as a form of you being reluctant to change, which means rehabilitation will not even change that. Again, you said that uh, a teacher punishes you for something that seems petty to you. It seems petty to you because you do not know the implications. You may have kicked a ball, broken a window, get punished. Maybe behind the curtains, you've hurt someone by throwing glass on them. You do not know, so please reconsider your options. One, what we do with punitive punishment. Punitive punishment is a punishment that is severe and hard to pay. And this depends on what crime you've done. Now, let us go to study.com on the 13th of January last year. Now, the reason we have punitive punishment is, all, is based on certain beliefs that have been proven true by psychologists. One, the belief that punishment will alter actions. Even as a little child, you, you took a glass and broke it. Your mother pinches you. You will not dare break that glass yet again. 
Again, the criminal will only take responsibility for the actions after consequences. Look, the Bible itself says in Romans chapter 6 verse 23 that the wages of sin is death. There's no way I'd come, I'd come to you, hit you in the face, and you'd start telling me, Levin, it's not wrong to hit people. I, there must be consequences in order for me to learn. Again, actions should be met with similar actions. The principle of karma, what goes around comes around. Once you do something, there must be an equal, equal and opposite reaction force, even taught in physics. I doubt you were in class at that time. Now, we also have infliction of pain which will change behavior. There's no way, I have, I have I've said the same way that if your mother pinches you, you won't do that again. Now, we're looking at the standard development goals number 10 and 11. That is, we should reduce inequalities. There's no way someone who's a murderer should be walking free just because they went through rehab. And also, um, sustainable cities and communities. We're not supposed to be having people in the city who are not well behaved. Thank you. Team proposition, you have one minute to give your closing remark. I love the way he said that punishment uh, does not, uh, the aggressive behavior that the punishment does does not deal with the behavior of that guy. But uh, the person does not, be, does not become reluctant of changing, not because he is not, is not willing to change, just because he doesn't have the right ways of changing. Because the environment that is up in or growing up in is all about being punished and dealing with such things. A case of a guy known as John Kibera, this person uh, had the behavior that he grew up in a, an environment whereby his dad did not care much about him. His mother was even not there to be concerned about him. And with that kind of attitude, he grew up with that trauma and decided he'd be a bad person. And uh, the funny thing is that he started stealing coffins. And uh, as he was about, when he was getting caught, he escaped being caught and he ran away for a while. But later on, he came and revealed himself because his friend talked to him and told him to go and make amendments and do what is right. And uh, at the moment, this guy is a pastor because of rehabilitation. And uh, one thing that rehabilitation does, it is all about helping the individual in the mind because the mind is the only thing that can enable us to see what is needed. So don't tell me that punishment is bringing our person out to be able to change. It's the person himself who requires a better environment in order to change. Thank you. Team opposition, you have one minute. He talked about John Kibera. In his statement, he said that this person decided to be a bad person and wasn't meant to be one. So it's choice. It's not environment. Now, we let us look on the motion. We talked about focus, which is to give much attention to something. We did not talk about completely giving away, or rather putting away rehabilitation. So, as per research from um, the mentalhealth.org on the 28th of uh, July last year, it shows that research shows that 65% of serial killers have mental Ill illness. Now, this means that these people should be detained, counseled, and punished in order to change. And as I leave, I leave you with one quote from Albert Einstein, and he said, the conduct of each depends the fate of all. And so, this punishment will help us. Thank you. Nyangwa, Stanley brought about a theme of uh, hopelessness and isolation when it comes to punitive measures. Uh, Peter went on to bring an issue on human growth and change of attitude. And then uh, David uh, spent some time on uh, issues to do with educate and improve an individual. So at least we could see that structure in terms of uh, you guys trying to, trying to bring about a theme in terms of what punitive measures, uh, punitive measures do or do not do. Uh, Meru School, um, you also did that, but in terms of uh, strengths of an individual, uh, Levin, you really uplifted the team. And you brought about almost four themes at the end of the debate. And that was really good because you really uh, brought in some points for the team. Um, Adiel and Manuel, 
uh, in terms of even giving examples, you did well, you're good debaters, but in terms of usage of time, mainly, that was a big problem that uh, maybe penalized you when you're giving examples and uh, how you use your time. Manuel, you even left on stage before you finished, uh, before the, the bell. So when you are debating, structure your debate as a team so that you know who's stronger, who will bring which point, so that it can be a coherent argument across board. But all the same, uh, all the best to, to both of you. This was very closely contested, and I think um, the departure for me was on content, so I will actually just uh, refrain myself to that, limit myself to that, and these are the things I wanted to hear, because I wrote them first. Um, the first thing I wanted to hear is, can either of the teams actually say that we can have a mix of both? You know, have offenses for which you rehabilitate and offenses for which you punish in whatever way or form. And that goes to the next point, which was brought out by Levin Mark, that the severity of the offense should actually determine the punishment. Then the other thing I needed to hear or we needed to hear was, which are the other forms of punishments that we have beyond jail? Imagine an offense of corruption. So someone has embezzled money. They should actually be told to restitute or actually pay back that money. That is a form of punishment. I'm honestly I'm really relieved. Because truth be told, we're given this motion, I think, approximately three hours before the debate. So we really had to put in our time. And the research we did was was amazing. We'd like to thank the rest of the school that came with us because they really did help us get those points. And the school itself was sending us here. Thank you for that. And the debate is quite good because I've gone to understand some of the things that I didn't know. And what I'm telling to my winners over here is that there's always a next time and probably you won't be the winners. Thank you. Um, I'm just happy at the chances you're giving us. I really think this exposure is great and uh, I hope we'll continue doing the same. Thank you. I'll tell you next time will be the learners. The debate was fine. It was educative, and um, next time will come a, a better prepared. We must say we've had a very commendable debate for our junior team, and I will go straight ahead to the results. And the judges awarded Meru High School with 64%. A round of applause, please, for Meru High School. And the judges awarded Nyangwa High School with 63.3%. A round of applause, please, for Nyangwa High School. And the winners of this debate is Meru High School with 64%. A very close call to both teams. And congratulations to both of them. We have come to the end of this debate. And it is goodbye from us. Until next time, make sure to check our social media handles for more of these types of debates on YouTube, on Instagram, and on Twitter at The Debate Circle. Kwaheri.